Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. This is just a quick video on the on some new information I received regarding Section 60. Now, um, the inf when I've mentioned Stop and Search before, it's been based on what I've heard on the news by people like Priti Patel, Sajid Javid, and, you know, Theresa May when she was Prime Minister. And it gave us the impression that the Section 60 meant that you could stop and search at random. Um, I went to a meeting last night and it was um, it was run by a facilitator for the st a trainer um, for police. He actually trains police and um, tries to make them stick with their oath as police officers. Um, he also um, reminds them of the code of ethics and the protocol of stopping and searching. And apparently in Bedfordshire, we have the lowest um, stop and searches, you know, um, what you call it, irregular or erroneous stop and searches in the UK, apparently. Um, so... When he, I asked him to explain, because he was talking about the stop and search, the regular stop and search, which is meant to be um, have a protocol called Go Wisely, where they have grounds to stop you. Um, go wisely. They need a warrant. They need to tell you which station they're at. Um, this is in normal circumstances without the Section 60. Um um, what else do they do? They need to tell you what legislation they're stopping you under and why they're stopping you in particular. But under Section 60, um, it implies that they can stop you indiscriminately at random. But apparently, um, it's still supposed to have that 12 hour and they can get an extension of the stop and search um, for up to 24 hours it's supposed to be in a Pacific area they have a defined area where they're going to stop and search and stop and search is only for weapons they can't um, stop you and say you're for a drug offence under the section 60 did I say stop and search is only for weapons no section 60 is only for weapons so they can't stop you on a drug charge under the section 60 and I thought that was an interesting revelation because I didn't realise that. I thought they could just discriminately go around stopping everyone. Um, I mean, you will get people who do, but if you don't know your rights, and they, ha they still have to follow a protocol, and even though they don't have to go to the highest guy, um, the... Um, the chief constable, they can go to this, they need the assistant constable's uh, approval. They still have to abide by the law and their um, oaths and their code of ethics and um, all of that kind of stuff. They still have to do that, even under the Section 60. Like I said, you're going to find police officers who are going to rely on your ignorance and they're going to stop and, you know, stop you under the section 60 and talk about drugs or talk about something else and they cannot do that it needs to be for weapons and they need to explain why they suspect you of having a weapon now the section 60 will normally um, be carried out in the areas where there has been knife crime so if you live in an area um where there is knife crime, they still need a re they can still stop you, and they, you, you still can't resist a stop and a search under the section 60. But at least you know that if they say, um, that well, they probably will say, um, we want to know if you've got any weapons on you. So if they do say those words, then they will be stopping you under section 60. But if they stop you under Section 60 and then they start talking about drugs, that's a totally different um, legislation. They can stop you under PACE for that, um, the PACE Act. I'll tell you what that means in a minute. Anyway, let me go to my notes because I wrote down a few notes while I was in training, so they're not cohesive. Uh, the police oaths and their code of practice... Um, 
endorses fairness, integrity, impartiality, and equal respect for all people. Um, the code of practice in policing is what the police are supposed to be following and it can be a disciplinary offence if they're not seen to be following it. But having said that, we've seen where, um, yeah, but I guess they we did hear that they were um, suspended. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes when you see police operating unfairly or using unreasonable force. One sec, I have got to switch on this. Um, I just remembered I turned the um, battery off so I could see the screen going dim. So sorry for that interruption. Um, Yes, so 80% stopped are white males, so they're not even though, but they, it's the disproportionality that makes a difference. It's, you know, in a certain area where, um, say, black people live, there'll be a high proportion of black people stopped in that area, as opposed to even though overall 80% of white people are stopped. Um so PACE is the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. Um, and under the Police Criminal Evidence Act, stop and search, you can stop and search for the misuse of drugs, um, terrorism, um, Section 60. Well, actually, um, the stop and search is under PACE. Um, it's 45 to 60% Misuse of Drugs Act. 1% to 2% terrorism, um, section 60 is 0.5%, and firearms 1%, and all others 05 um, And I'm not quite sure if that was successful stop and search, or whether it was the percentage of stop and searches under the pace. And remember, this is just recorded, so there are situations where it's not recorded. So Section 60, um, Criminal Justice and Publish, Public Order Act came out in 1994 and it's a no suspicion power. That means they don't need to have, they don't need to suspect you of anything, but they do need to be searching for weapons. Um, like I said, stolen goods, drugs should not be um, stopped under Section 60. Um, if they're looking for stabbings, like I said, it has to be in a defined area. And anyone in that area, in the defined area, can be stopped and searched. Um, it has to be authorised by someone. So even though they, they were saying in the news they don't need any authorisation, they do need authorisation, but they're not going to the top. They can get it by, get it the authorisation from his deputy. Um, let me see what else. They report to the assistant chief constable, who still, and that assistant chief constable is still accountable to the senior officer. Um, twenty-five percent stop and searches conducted under pace, and led to one arrest. So twenty-five percent stop and searches only led to one arrest. So they, like they said, they they're hyping it up, but. It's not usually successful. Um, stop and search in vehicles, that comes under the Road and Traffic Act, 1998, Section 163. It's an enabling act um, designed to warn or investigate, um, and that can be conducted under PACE. Um, but the Road Traffic Act itself has no power to search. So if they're stopping you under the Road Traffic Act, they can't say, oh, I'm going to search your car. They would have to um, be stopping you under um, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. Tell you something, all these little bits and pieces, it's very difficult to retain. Um, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act gives, you, gives the police permission to search your car, but the Road and Traffic Act doesn't. Um, the police are meant to abide by a code of ethics, which is accountability, fairness, honesty, integrity, leadership, objectivity, openness, respect, and selflessness. I can't imagine selflessness being in there. Who's selfless these days? Um, 
77% of assaults don't include a weapon. Um, 6% of arrests involved a blade. Um, under operating Operation Scepter, that's the knife campaign. But I understand that, you know, this knife crime um, on the boxes, that doesn't come under Operation Scepter. That must be something else. And um, they mentioned the Scarman report. They, met, they mentioned the McPherson. Um, they reckon that there's something called the HM Inspectorate of Constabulary. HMIC, which equivalent to Ofsted. You know when Ofsted goes in and they examine, they investigate schools and access, and they investigate the health service to make sure that they are operating properly. The HM Inspector of Constabulary works in that way. They investigate the police. I thought it was the Police Complaints Commission that did that, but apparently it's not. Um, yeah, and then I had to leave because it was getting late. But yeah, as long as you know, the Section 60 is designed just for knives. It is for a defined area only. It is meant to be for 12 hours to 24 hours. But I haven't heard anything about the time frame in this, um, in this um, what you call it, order or, it's not even an order, from what Pretty Patel said in her statement. I haven't heard anything about the time frame. So it's almost like it's indiscriminate. It's almost like they're letting people believe that they can go out willy nilly for an extended period of time. And there are no consequences. They can just pick up on anybody they like. They can stop and search whoever they like. And it's not the fact. It's not the case. So that's really why I did this quick video. Hope it's useful for some. If you're going to the carnival, please be careful. Um, please know your rights best to get out before six o'clock because most of the trouble seems to happen after six o'clock so if you can get out before six please do so if i go i'm going to go on the outskirts i'm going to leave about four or five o'clock and that's all i've got to say but apart from that i wish you a safe weekend bye bye